Welcome to another installment of Cooking the Casbah. We're cooking our way around the Mediterranean right here downtown Madison. Today we're cooking healthy Mediterranean. That's why I'm surrounded by my friends who are very health conscious. Today's meal is going to have a fantastic salad, a date, hearts of palm salad, a soup that is tomatoes and wheat, and a mint mango chutney on top of tilapia that is baked. Come back, please, and watch us how we're going to prepare. <laughs> <laughs> That wasn't a mouthful, I don't know what it is. So come back and we're gonna make it all here today on Cooking the Castle. Was that too long? 15 seconds? Okay, let's cook. My name is Sabi. I have traveled the world, near and far, in search of exciting foods. Come with me on an epic journey of culinary adventures, right here on Cooking the Casbah. Our children, we have so many hopes for them, but we don't always have the answers. Through the Agenda for Change, United Way is helping parents turn their hopes for their children into reality. By supporting parents, United Way knows more children will grow up feeling that they are full of promise, are safe, are loved. United Way of Dane County is creating real solutions for our children and our community, and that's what matters. To find out more, visit www.unitedwaydanecounty.org. Welcome back. As I mentioned earlier, we're making a healthy Mediterranean meal. Today, salad that is hearts of palm, that's good for your heart, and sun, uh, sun-dried dates. The soup is tomato cracked wheat, or bulgur soup, and that's easy and fun to make. And the meal, of course, the tilapia, filet of tilapia that is cooked and baked in uh, mango mint chutney. So without any further delay, are you guys excited? Yeah! After, after this, you can skip your workout, because this is so healthy, it's going to be the workout of watching me make it, right? <laughs> First of all, uh, salad dressing is so easy to make, and I see a lot of people run out to the store and buy their own, that's fine if you're that busy. But otherwise, it's so easy to make. And the reason why I think it's easy to make is because there's so much of it out there. So I usually make my salad dressing from scratch or from uh, muddled rather than scratched stuff. So I hope this is not too loud for, the, for anyone on, uh, on the set here. First of all, I start with crushing the garlic with a little bit of salt. That's what was in here. Tell it right here so you guys can smell it. When I do, is this enough garlic? I felt that this surface was hard enough, so we'll do. So, the garlic is in the house, right? Garlic and salt. I'm gonna add the vinegar. Your favorite vinegar could be red, could be white. Here I have a balsamic, white balsamic vinegar, which is one of my favorite vinegars to work with. It's subtle get flavorful. Now before I start mixing, I want to make sure that I have the, um, we're, gonna, we're, gonna whisk, we're gonna whisk all of that. And as I whisk, I add the olive oil. This is extra virgin olive oil. <laughs> Remember, olive oil is best purchased in an opaque bottle, not clear. This is what I use for daily use. When you buy olive oil, buy it in a can or a card box. This way it doesn't get any sunlight. Uh, equal amounts, of oil to the vinegar. And this is pretty much it for a salad dressing. What do you guys think? The sun-dried dates, you can purchase these at a health store. You can get your own dates and chop them. But this is sun-dried. I'll set this here and let it sit and marinate. Meanwhile, we need something, a bed, something for the lettuce, for the, for the, uh, for the salad, like lettuce or a spring mix. Here I have a combination of uh, arugula, uh, baby lettuce, uh, red, uh, spinach, a combination of things. Uh, your favorite tomato. Found some grape tomatoes here. How about all of it? <laughs> hearts of palm. What are hearts of palm? The shoot of the palm tree 
comes out about a foot or so when it's fairly young. This is the core, the center of it. And what you see is this stuff is, is cultivated. It's planned for the purpose of canning or shipping around. It's a rare product that is available fresh a few times of the year, but this comes from Brazil. You can also purchase it chopped. Um, I like the longer ones, the whole ones that I can chop and also decorate my soup, my salad with it. And of course, if you're using a sharp knife, be careful. But you can also put some of the stuff that's chopped right here and we'll cut up some more and I think you're gonna like this it tastes a little bit like um, parts uh, like artichoke bottoms or white asparagus so several things out there taste like it so if you can't find parts of palm maybe some asparagus would do with that some seeds sunflower seeds if you like any nut, your favorite nut, hopefully it's not a TV personality, right? Because then it looked really funny on, on your salad. <laughs> and uh, that's how she goes. And as far as serving, the best thing to do with this when you serve it is find the proper utensil, of course. Um, find the proper utensil, of course, and then serve it on a plate like this. And the proper utensil is... <laughs> Sorry, Pete. <laughs> That's what I was looking for. I'll get some of the greens on the bottom. And remember some of that dressing that we put on top. And this, my friends, is a healthy Mediterranean salad. Come back, we'll start the soup. <laughs> <laughs> If you want good food, if you want something that's actually healthy and nutritious, carrots that actually still have a little bit of iron in them, things like that, this is the place to go. Period. We're back. How's the salad? Great. Hey, thanks for saving me some. <laughs> Once again, I end up feeding everyone. I didn't get any. Uh, the soup we talked about, remember? Healthy Mediterranean. The soup, easy, fun to make. The first thing I chose was wheat, some cracked wheat. <laughs> Number one wheat. Number two wheat, and this is the pot. With a little bit of heat on, a hint of olive oil, white onions, white pepper, sea salt, number one wheat. You might ask, number one, what do you mean number one? It's the size of the cut. This is number two, the coarser of the two. And this is number one. Notice how fine this looks compared to that. Aha, uh aha. -huh, uh -huh. I'm turning this into an educational show. I'm gonna add them in here anyway. Now, while this sautés a little, and the oil coats the onions, and the wheat. If I feel it needs a little bit more oil, I'll add a little bit more olive oil. Now let this sit and heat a little. Now this is tomato soup, so I need tomato sauce. You can also make tomato juice, squeezing some tomatoes. And the way I like to squeeze my tomatoes is easy. Um, most households have some of these. You get the ripest tomatoes you can get your hands on. Don't get the ones that are good for a salad, like these firm tomatoes. And the juice of half a line. And this.
and never stick a sharp object in the blender. And I am a trained professional, especially when the blender is running. Just like that. Mix it all in there. Right, and using a ladle, I help the stuff through. So can you use any type of tomato? Or do you have a preference? Something ripe. A steak tomato, something with a lot of meat. And this is great towards the end of the season, the tomato season, when the tomatoes are very ripe. And if you go to the farmer's market here locally, at the end of the farmer's market during the day, when they, nobody else wants those tomatoes, that's the tomatoes you want to buy. You do the favor, you do the, the farmers a favor by buying things that no one else did, and also you can make soup out of it. This is calling for the juice. I'm gonna add the juice right here. And do the rest of it. And you'll get to a point where pretty much all that's left is skin and seeds. And the longer you blend it, the less you'll have left in the sieve, and the thicker the product will be in the pot. You guys get the idea? This is the beginning of our soup, and we're going to pay close attention to this. And for now, let it simmer. That's the soup. That was easy. Who's timing me? This is about half an hour. <laughs> and now, the fish. The fish portion of our meal. We wa I wanted to use tilapia because it's a nice, healthy, low in fat filet. And you can find them available in your seafood center in just about any size filet. This is a roughly an eight ounce. Uh, we're gonna bake this. But before we bake it, I'll show you what we're gonna put on the bottom of that. Plantains. How did the plantains make it to the Mediterranean? We're cheating today. <laughs> I got some plantains. Does anyone know where the plant is? It's tropical, Central African. I like them because they're a form of starch and they're not rice or pasta. Something in the middle. You can buy them very green. This I selected kind of brownish, uh, telling me that, it's, that it has enough sweetness in it. Um, I cut them long into long stripes or slices so they can sit on the bottom of the fish just like that. So if I have three fillets, I'm going to make three rows of these. And if it's too thick, I'll cut again. Is this going too fast? Should I slow down? One more. And it's easier to peel after I slice them. Any which way you like them, then that way. This is the base for this fish dish. Now, it looks pretty dry, doesn't it? It needs some sauce. And that's where the mango comes in. The mango juice, you can make mango juice using the same method that we use for the tomatoes. It's okay if it has a little bit of tomatoes in it. Put some mango. And I, I want to show you before we start blending this. Uh, you can get these in your local produce, something exotic, maybe not. They're becoming more common. Uh, there's a seed that sits inside like that. And what I need to do is take the meat off the, the seed. So as it sits, lays down this way, I cut along the seed. And this is the seed, see this part? That's the seed. I'll do the same thing on the flip side of it. The seed is flat, long, and simply peel. Even though this, the core is the seed, there's a little bit of meat around it, and I want to get every single piece of meat that's in there. How are we doing on time? Okay, let's see. Uh, put some of that juice in here. <laughs> <laughs> don't, 
blend this the same way we did the tomatoes. I added some of the juice to help it blend faster. I'm slicing some peppers for the top of the fish. Put some of this on here. I put it on the whole now. And then this is the mango puree. Add it to the rest of our mango. This is a lot of mango puree for those three fillets. But we can control we can control how much of it we use, just like that. And um, green garlic. This stuff is the garlic shoots. I like to sprinkle some around the pan just to give me some a hint of garlic. Um, a little bit of peas. Everything's gonna settle in the pan. Some dill. We're almost ready with the soup. Uh, cumin. And this, this is definitely an optional thing, cayenne. Hot or not? Hot. hot. We go hot. <laughs> I like these kids. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, a hint of salt. This is something we can adjust later. This is ready to bake. I'm gonna bake it. When we come back, we'll try the soup, and hopefully you guys like it. And I'll show you how to finish the tilapia. You guys excited? You are watching a Squeaky Wagon production, and you like it. There's a lot of things to like about the co-op. That we shop here every week. I love the salad bar. It's always fresh and something good to eat. There are things in the deli that you won't find anywhere else. You can get anything here if they don't have it. You ask, but get it. It's shopping with my um, son. He uh, he enjoys like loading up the bulk foods into the bags. Although we do spill, spill a few items on the floor, but the selection is really good. There's a lot of things to like about the co-op. It feels really like a part of the community that I want to support. Наша семья боялась преследования по политическим убеждениям. Mi papá no es el mismo, no es de la guerra. Guess what? The soup is ready to serve. We're gonna do that. And I'll check up on the fish. We'll make the final step of the fish that is the mint chutney. And eat it, of course, right? Is this what convinced you guys to wake up so early in the morning and come to a shoot of <laughs> cooking the Casbah? So this is lunchtime for most of you, right?
that was the soup. To make the chutney for the fish that is baking, I use more of that mango stuff that we started out with and include a bunch of mint. Uh, if the stems of the mint are nice and soft, you can tell by chewing on one. This is soft. Then I take the whole crown right here on top. I'll add a little bit of water if it needs it. Otherwise, we'll just blend it. This is the desired consistency to make the uh, chutney. Oh. This is our mango tilapia before the chutney. To serve this up, the best thing to do Are you shooting this? You know it. We're gonna get it out. Set on top. And of course, we clean this up. How's it look, Pete? Can you see it on camera? <laughs> that was the mango mint tilapia. It's part of our healthy Mediterranean. We made a soup, a salad, and a meal that were light and healthy today as part of our healthy Mediterranean episode. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Join us again as we cook more around the Mediterranean, right here downtown Madison, on Cooking the Casbah.